greetings to all our Fibomites and residents of this great state. I'm on air for you. I'm here for you. I want to listen to you. I want us to speak. I want to clear any naughty issues you may not have actually known or heard about COVID-19 and any other issue of interest to mankind. So I want to thank God for all of you and welcome all of you to this program. Thank you very much, This interaction is taking place in the middle of the COVID-19 fight led by the governor in Akwaibu State. Thus, as the Excellency has said, he will be addressing aspects of the coronavirus virus in Akwaibu State and other issues of governance and administration. This interview is being relayed by some of our sister radio stations in the state and it is audience participation. To join the conversation with His Excellency the Governor, you are expected to call the number, mobile phone number 0817-252522. I repeat the number. 0817-252522. The other phone number is 0907-240. Five eight seven six. Can I take that number again? Zero nine zero seven two four zero five eight seven six. The program is live on www dot and on www online. The name is a great blessing. I salute Buddha Echo with me to put the question. We have also heard and seen the strides in the recorded in preventing the spread of coronavirus in our Bible through the testing and setting up of isolation centers, creating a difference. And um, I just want to ask simply, what exactly is happening? What is the latest in the battle against COVID-19 in our Bible? Well, uh, let me once again thank all our Bible mites. When I say Akwaibo might, it includes all those who are also re resident in Akwaibo. Uh, let me thank those who are cooperating with all our measures, our guidelines, uh, certain I could call rules that we've had to set up at this point in time. I might sound a little bit repetitive today because uh, the general belief is anything you want people to know and it sinks into them, you must say it a minimum of 16 times. My first caution is please obey all the procedures and all the guidelines and all the rules set out for this. The hygiene conditions can never be compromised. Wearing of face mask is compulsory and that order has been signed to law. You may be arrested for not wearing face mask. Social distancing must also be observed. General hygiene Right from the time, even before I was born, Akwaibom people were known to be of very hygiene standard. So I expect that this is the time we want to show to the whole world that we are exceptionally clean people. And I expect that we will do a lot more than what we used to do. And I also want to use this platform once again before I start anything to appreciate our medical team. Right from the Commissioner for Health, to every single medical um, associate, let me call it that way, all ancillary businesses who are helping in one way or the other during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic across the whole world. As an introduction, at times we just read certain things in the Bible, uh, we may not actually get to allow it to sink. 
Uh, right from the time I was born, I used to read the book of Haggai when God had been promising that for a while he would shake all nations. And you could see, as of today, our follow-up per day, every blessed day, we follow up on the average, not less than 122 people every day. So we've been extremely aggressive in tackling this. I think that's why NCDC said that we scored 99% in contact tracing. It also shows that we are leaving no stone unturned. No matter how people want to look at it, I want to believe we moved well and fast enough. Because one thing, one key thing about help, help might come and it could come quite late, but help must come on time. And I think that would really also uh, help us in managing the entire situation. Uh, but uh, before you ask me another question, let me clear the air because I don't want to forget. I have to come with my statistics. I have the statistics of debt because somebody who wanted to be very mischievous, went into the social media and posted something. And I don't know if people from Akwaibom can be out to destroy their own state. I don't know what they stand to gain. People post certain things, and this thing is something that is across the entire world. But I'm here to see a place where people post the kind of things our people post against ourselves. I don't know why we rise up so much COVID-19 has nothing to do with any governor. It has nothing to do with any president. I said so. It does not respect religion, gender. It does not respect uh, color of skin. It has no political party. It cuts across every single place in the world. I don't know how many of us can still remember our geography. If COVID-19 can get to a place called Iceland, I don't know whether there's any country it has not reached. But I don't want to go into that. So somebody posted something. I want to quickly let the entire world know that that was part of mischief that the person did. When the person posted that we should check that we had so many deaths which had not been reported. I have the statistics. 
out of 42 government hospitals we have in this state managed under the hospital management board. Manuel Hospital, AK, Fikor Ekbene, Oron, Etin, and Ifungban, Ipumo, Bak, Amamon, Fikor Ekbene, 42 of them. Let me not go one by one. I have analysis. In previous years, in January 2018, we, in all the hospitals in the state, in 2018, January up to April, in 2018, total number of deaths in the state, the whole of 2018, for the first four months of the year, January, February, March, April, we had 238 that died in 2018. In 2019, we had 176 deaths as our medical, uh, as our Medicare kept improving. In 2020, from January 1 to the last day in April, we had 119. So, I don't know where that person got such from. Let me repeat. In 2018, January, February, March, April, total number of deaths in all 40-something hospitals that we had, 238. In 2019, 176. In 2020, January, February, March, April, put together only 119. So let that person tell our five people where he got his own statistics from. And these are figures. I know figures don't lie. Uh, these are facts. These are figures. It's there for people to cross-check. I've gone ahead to do analysis hospital by hospital. I have all the hospitals here. If you're watching me through TV, you can see it here. We can publish this for you to go through, and then you can also go to those medical records and check. So I needed to clear the air on that. However, the first question was for me to give what is happening. That's why I'm taking pen in today's meeting. God promised he will shake all nations of the world. He has shaken all nations of the world. Coronavirus is in every country, every nation. But you know one thing with God? beautiful in all situations. That's why people like us have the faith. That's why people like us can have that peace of God in our heart, whatsoever we do. However, coming from a Kwebom point of view, there is no story again about few things we've done. But it may interest the whole state to know that even the last batch of medical equipment that we imported, six containers, uh, we got a call within the week that they've started arriving. As I'm talking to you right now, within the week, we, are, we start clearing those ones that have arrived. What are we going to do? I want to see that within a very short period, you don't need to drive up to one hour to have an excellent medical services. So if you check right now, there's no federal constituency in this state that will not put modern, excellent medical, uh, secondary healthcare facilities in place. And um, we are going to move on. We've already started on emergency training. We've trained a whole lot of doctors and nurses on emergencies. We need to graduate those training. And for sure, we cannot do this alone. We're going to seek a whole lot of help from developed nations to train our people on these uh, 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 new development, let me tell you, there were major issues in Medicare and healthcare uh, management systems. So we're going to go on aggressive training. If we check all the federal constituencies, I think we are moving. Uh, right now, the only one we are yet to award is the Corobasi Federal Constituency. We are going to do that as soon as possible. Wanted to finish renovation of um, the hospital in Bareni uh, in Assam. So that immediately we finish that, we now take up the general hospital in Corobasi. And that will be awarded in the third quarter as soon as possible. So that by the end of this year, there is no federal constituency that won't have up to date modern standard digitized secondary healthcare facilities. So that within a short period, you can get help. And we will not just end on that. We are going to deploy a whole lot of ambulance services. And we set up emergency ambulance services so that wherever you are, you can actually call those emergency lines and then you get help. And once you get help, you should be able to reach any medical facility as soon as possible. So that's what you see right now. Check 
all the federal constituencies, there's none that we are not doing something uh, as at now. If you do, I, I don't want to spend time counting, but I want to wait for phone calls. Outside Ecorobasi federal constituency, I would like to know whether there's any federal constituency we are not picking up a standard secondary healthcare facility in which we are trying to modernize. And it must also interest you to know that from the beds and everything we have in those hospitals, they are all, the least you can find is 2019 equipment. But those new containers that are coming, they are 100% 2020 equipment. And uh, we'll continue to do our very best. There is no substitute to healthcare facilities, none at all. A healthy state must always be a wealthy state. And I keep repeating myself, every single life in this state is as important to me as the life of any other person. So I must do everything possible to make sure we save lives. Finally, before I take the next question, since I'm giving background information, let Akwaibo might also know, since we set up the case management team and set up all our facilities, deployed everything on hand, all the equipment that we had, as of today, we've had 100% recovery in all cases that have been confirmed. Quote me anywhere. You can cross-check with our situation room. You can cross-check with our case management people. Uh, one or two cases that have been reported as um, in case of loss of lives. I mean, we all knew what happened. The second person was brought to us lifeless. The person came totally unconscious. And, I mean, as the medical expert said, came with core morbidity and a whole lot of things happened. The person was totally unconscious. So at that point, there's nothing we could have done except God. So I wouldn't even attribute that to the case in point. The first case we had, I think the medical experts also explained what happened. It had nothing to do with all the same situation. And I also want to use this opportunity to appeal to our people, especially our medical experts. Please, a stitch in time saves nine. I said, so if help must come, help must come on time. Report any source. Don't wait until you come. No, you don't need to confirm anything. That's why we have situational room. Once you suspect yourself with any of those symptoms, please let us know. Let us know as of today, all the people who had called us, whether it ended up being that or not, I want to say here, categorically clear, that in a case management file, we've had 100% uh, re recovery rate. So we want to maintain that. And those people who have professors of respiratory medicine to all kinds of, even internal medicine experts, consultants, they're all there. They're in the team. So these people know what to do. And I don't want to say much because I won't claim to be a medical expert when I'm not. Uh, but I have those experts and we talk to from time to time. When it comes to case management, if you can manage, if you cannot manage a kiosk, you can manage a multinational. Crisis management principles follow the same. So people like us who have been trained on crisis management across the globe, I, it has come to a time where we have to deploy those knowledge that we've acquired. And I think we are doing that very well, too. And we'll continue to do it to save the lives of our people. Please obey all the rules. Don't violate a single one of them. If we find you outside without a face mask, we'll arrest you. Thank you. Can I take more questions? Yeah. Yeah, so how close are we to opening the Itumba COVID-19 facility? And is it going to be open to people from other states? Uh, Consumption face is the function of availability. Before now, it wasn't even available. Now that we have it available, and you know, everything we do, we do it with quality. We do it with international standard. I, I met this when I did a press interaction with people at the banquet hall the other, the, I think two Mondays ago. I told them what we are setting up there is a world-class facility. And uh, you're asking me when. When I spoke, I said, give me two weeks. One week will just lapse. I think since I made that statement, will lapse on Monday. So if you count from Monday to another one week, we should be able to open. The only problem we may have now is that the gas cylinder, uh, equivalent to a gas cylinder, call it oxygen cylinder in this case, those big tanks of oxygen that you see outside, they are not manufactured in Nigeria. You must bring it in. And um, we try to bring that in. So. You see that uh, 
big cylinder tank you see outside. A lot of people say it look, it's used for both gas and oxygen. So that tank is not manufactured in Nigeria because we want to make sure every single base space there, I mean, is connected to an oxygen. So as you're in your bed, from, your, from the headrest of your bed, you can be attended to. And even the beds that Kakovit gave us is substandard to the kind of beds that we have. We have 2019, 2020 medical beds. What they sent to us is, I mean, we don't use that again at all. So we have modern beds that are remotely, can be remotely controlled from their sites because it's a isolation center. So we must save lives of even those medical experts that are there. So give us from Monday, after Monday 11th of May, give us up to 18th of May, we should be able to cut the tape in that place. But the issue is not just cutting the tape, it's to make sure that every single facility, and also there's a flu, there's a particular flu that, take for example, if you enter a medical emergency, the flu of medical emergency in any hospital is different from the flu of an isolation center. Some of the people writing this, they don't even understand. So we need to also ensure there's going to be a final inspection on Thursday. That Thursday should be, I don't know the date by heart now, if Monday is 11, Tuesday is 12, Wednesday is 13, so Thursday should be the 14th. So by 14th of May, there's going to be a final inspection where the medical experts will also bring the microbiologists, professors, and so on, who will also not assess the flow of the isolation set that will assess from the flow up to the lab, up to where the canteen is, how they will bring the food, how they will serve them the food, how the restrooms are positioned, and everything, and make sure there are WHO standards before they pass for final and finishing touches to be put in place. That is to be done on Thursday by the medical experts. And I want to believe that will meet all the standards that are set up by WHO of a, a center. So give us the 18th of May, we should be able to showcase what we have, except that oxygen tank. But if we have any way to buy within Nigeria, we are ready. We are sourcing for it. Outside that, we need to, because it's supposed not to leak. There are a lot of control measures around that. So I think that's the only thing we're having challenge. And the new set of containers that are coming in, a lot more ventilators are coming in as well. And it must also interest quite some people to know, even the 13, that we open our containers and brought them out. We've, by the special grace of God, not man, not the wishes of people, we've never had a cause to use even one. And my prayer is we shouldn't have cause to use any. But we can acquire as many as we want, but we shouldn't use any. Because by the time you get to the point where you are on that machine, it means you are no more the one breathing. The machine is breathing for you. And I don't pray any acquirable mind should get to that point. Excellently, you talked about food. And um, it reminds me of a comment by one of the survivors that um, he came out of isolation healthier than he went in. And I'm curious, um, who pays for the welfare and the treatment of the COVID-19 patients? Aquabum State Government. Uh, we, we had to undertake our responsibilities in this case. And um, we, I keep saying so. Number one thing in our social contract, even as, I mean, as a governor, is to save life, to make sure everybody is safe. So once you're under that condition, you did not pray for it. You just happen to be a victim. So in that case, government must stand by you. So it's the Aquabon State Government. We take care of all those people. And I mentioned this when we were setting up those isolation centers, that I'll make the place good enough for anybody to be there. I mean, we're not praying to be there. But even if that person is a president of a country, it should be good enough for the person to be there. Likewise, any other Aquabon person. So that's why you're hearing those people coming out, telling you that they cannot imagine that kind of isolation center in Nigeria. Uh, well, you know, we're, we sound so modest. We, we are not trying to be boastful. But you are watching what is happening on TV every evening on different isolation centers. I don't want to blow my trumpet, but watch what is happening. Check the electronic uh, medium of communication that people watch most of the time. Uh, you see how <laughs> patients come out to the main route even with the mask, protesting that they've not seen water, they've not seen not even a ceiling fan where they are, no food, nothing. I differentiate scale from one point to another. And what you're watching and what you're seeing and what you're hearing should let you know 
whether we are that responsible and that responsive to situations and times like this. Let our work speak for ourselves in that case so that we don't just say those things. And you've seen some isolation centers also in the social media uh, that look like a, a disco hut. And that's what some people said I should have put up here for our Kwaibun people. A lot of people condemned when we were setting up a five-star facility as a solution center, that why shouldn't I go and get a market tent and put people in a weather condition like a problem? You can imagine the volume of rain we have here. So when it rains at night, what happens to people there? Are those not human beings? Are they not a problem people? What makes me sleeping in government house more important than them? Sorry, a lot of people think, I mean, this government has conscience. So we are people that work with conscience and all amount of sincerity in what we do. Uh, we, what we wouldn't wish for ourselves, we wouldn't wish for any other one person. So uh, when you read those things, uh, don't worry. We are not doing this for man. We are doing it because every man shall give account of his record before God. So we are doing it as something that we will be accountable for. That there was a day God gave us responsibility. How did we discharge those responsibilities? Did we do with our all amount of sincerity? Were we committed to what we are doing? And at the end, I think the answer will show what we've done. Definitely, I don't come to hear the term of the 19 facts. There was this claim of the people that the governor should uh, talk to the people about the case situation. Then the governor spoke and said the record straight. May I know, sir, uh, what is the feedback that coming to you? Uh, well, um, if you wait for, let me also say something here. I think it's in Luke Gospel, chapter 6, verse 26, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not a pastor. But you see, the reason I rule out this is because it's the best, I keep saying this, the best leadership book I've ever seen on planet Earth. It's the Holy Bible. Jesus Christ even said, woe to you that every single person says well about you. It's not allowed. Where every single soul says, I mean, everybody is praising you. The Bible says, woe to such a man, that how can everybody, if I have 7 million people, it's totally impractical for 7 million people to just praise me. It's not allowed. It's in the Bible. Check. Luke Gospel, chapter 6. I think it's either 25 or 26. Pastors will help me check that. It is not allowed. Just try to say so. If you go, if you have a printed Bible, it's indicated in red. Say, woe to a man. Who expects that everybody should speak well of him? So, um, people are bound to say certain things they want to do. But one thing you need to be sure, this is a highly focused government. We don't get distracted at all. And I was born to hear that a clear conscience is not afraid of accusation. Once you have clear conscience, uh, you shouldn't be afraid of uh, accusation. <laughs> because your conscience is clear. God looks into the heart. They say, God, no, I don't deserve it. Forget it. It doesn't move me. Paul Apostle says, none of these things move me so that I can finish my course with joy. Go and check. So I'm that person. No. Go and check out of Apostle. None of those things move me because I know I give my people the best. Time would tell. Right now, people are just, uh, people were saying, oh, governor should, they, those things were not necessary at all. With what is happening today in Nigeria, you can now put everything and then see. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm here to receive one naira from the federal government. One naira. The only thing we receive is clearly written in the letter they sent to us. They say uh, confiscated or seized custom uh, rice. That's what we received. And we have to send it for uh, scientific analysis, whether it's good for consumption or not. I'm here to check with the Minister of Science and Tech uh, what's the outcome. But right on the spot there as they were uploading, I think they, they had to dump close to 500 bags in the ravine because those ones were completely bad. I've not received anything. I've not received one naira. So if we can manage this with the kind of allocation we have now and still meet up responsibilities as government, it shows that somebody somewhere must be making sacrifices. It's like when you enjoy peace. Wherever you see peace, either in a state or in a place, and then you feel aura of peace, one party must agree to play a fool. If one party does not agree to play a fool, you will not have peace. So in the same way too, somebody must make a sacrifice to see what you're seeing here today. And we are happy to do it. 
and we are happy to serve our people because our people are good people. Don't mind what you hear, they say, oh, setting the record straight. Those who try to alter the records, you know facts do change. The only thing that is constant is truth. Those who try to alter the facts the way they are, uh, they are less than 0.0001%. It's like that in every society. So they will be there. So don't ever expect that they will not be there. Even Jesus Christ himself was accused. Jesus Christ was accused. So there is no man that will not be accused. Even Moses, when he was leading the children of Israel, went through a hair. He was the one always going to God to talk to God for God to do all those miracles. But immediately he finishes, they will abuse him seriously. So if you are a leader, I mean you should be aiming at the goal. Remain focused. So I came up, I tried to let people know the truth, that what those people wrote, they were trying to be mischievous about what they are saying. But what surprises me is, as I said in my introductory and background speech, before we started this program, what do we stand to gain if we pull down our own state? If we try somebody even very sensational, opening headlines, the banner of that person's message was, run from a I mean, while we are trying to attract foreign investors, we are trying to bring in foreign investors here. And my question is, if that guy today is asked to travel to New York, will he go? To, he will not go. He will not go. So you are telling people to run away. Meanwhile, the investors we have here are telling us they feel safer in Akwaibum. You, an Akwaibum citizen, you are telling investors to run away from your own state. I mean, come on. Udom Emmanuel will live here in a few months' time. Another person will be here. Then we'll continue. So what race are we running? What do we want to bequeath to our own generation that are, I mean, the next generation coming after us? It's not about Udom Emmanuel. COVID-19 has nothing to do with Udom Emmanuel. Everywhere, after campaign, after elections, people join hands for governance. That's why I still appreciate those who are joining hands for us to see what we can do for ourselves. Thank you. Yeah, to follow up to that, Your Excellency, um, I'm just um, thinking, if you were to give an assessment of the team you put together to manage COVID-19 in Akwaibu, how would you assess their performance? <laughs> I would call them excellent. I said, so you know, I started by appreciating what they've done. Uh, I said they've done very, 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 very exceptional. Why am I saying this? I go back to what I said earlier. There's no man yet alive on planet Earth that will tell you he has ever seen a situation like this before. So something you've never seen, there's no script. There's no reference library. There's nothing, there's no, nothing you can, oh, it happened like this. It has no formula. That is why you could see a whole lot of leaders are so frustrated up to the point. A leader will tell you that you should inject people disinfectant. And uh, it's out of frustration because not that he doesn't love his own people, it's because of the love he has for his people. He's even thinking, I could be God just to blow, you know, into the air and everybody will just be healed. So people were just blaming the leader, that leader. I said, no, don't blame him. It is purely in the mindset of love. To him, he, he cannot just be that God who can just, I mean, speak, and everybody will just uh, come up and then be healed of this uh, uh, infection. So it is a very trying moment, and I really want to still continue to thank the team that we put in place. They've done so well. I think ESCO, about two ESCOs ago, ESCO, all ESCO members rose up and passed a vote of confidence on the Commissioner for Health. Uh, you know, one thing about health, health is like, uh, do you know the kind of vehicle they call Tukumbo? Okay. A medical doctor is like a Tukumbo mechanic. The more you repay Tukumbo, immediately they put the key and start, even from the sound of the engine, you know what is wrong with that Tukumbo car? I will tell you. So. Uh, it's the same thing. So a medical doctor who had seen so much in the medical field, it comes with experience. It comes with how many cases have you seen. That is why at times you see somebody who has a BSc, another person has a PhD. They pay a BSc man higher because of his experience. So uh, if you look at things like this, a whole lot of things come to play. That's why I told you that, and I said so when I did interaction with the press the other time, that the best medical doctor might not be the best hospital administrator. Same thing, the best pilot might not be the best airline manager. So it doesn't actually matter. 
So you can be so good in gynecology, pediatrics, internal medicine, public health, but not make you the best in crisis management. Uh, the last time I checked, all those people that wrote those things, none of them had ever done one case study on crisis management. Let them tell me the case study and what they submitted and who they submitted to. I'll tell them the professor I submitted my own to and my scores and my mark in the public when I do corporate governance. I'll show them all those ones. So some of these things, you don't just study. Knowledge is good. That's why God says my people perish for lack of knowledge. So when you acquire knowledge and you apply application of that knowledge is wisdom. So when we are doing these things, it's allowed so they can talk. They will continue to do the right thing. So I score them very high. They've done so well. And uh, I believe that's why I also say so, that if you get into a case management file, those recovered 100% in a case management file. Any caller? Any question? We have several questions. You have several questions. Please hit me. On uh, Facebook, um, there is Uwem Daniel that government should do something about people wearing their nose mask on their mouth to avoid police and not to avoid coronavirus. Um, someone here also talked about um, distribution of face masks. If government is planning to give face masks to the people, and then the third one before I you get a break here is Brenda who says when the school is used. When will school <laughs> okay, let me start with the last question. When will school resume? Uh, coronavirus, we are plotting it like a graph and we are monitoring our graph. You know, everything in life follows what I call a normal curve it starts, it peaks, it declines. So once we look at our graph and it's at the declining stage, which as of today, the graph is pointing downwards. We're already beginning to see that declining stage because based on our situation room now, the throughout this week, uh, I think it's only one case we've had amongst all the numbers that I read out. And um, we've sent so many, so many samples for testing. And I'm hoping that between now and Monday, we should be able to get the results. We sent them to Iran. All the final ones we did, we sent all. So that we expect that with that huge number, will help us determine how the graph is like. And we did that intentionally. Because all the case and everything that came into the situation room, the tracing concerns, even those that, I mean, were out of uh, references, uh, we picked all and we've sent them for testing. So once that comes in block like that, we'll be able to determine and do what I call the final tracing. Once we do that and we're able to achieve at least 90 something percent of that tracing, then we manage those cases through. We will be able to determine, and I know very well, God would not allow us to get into community situation. That I know very well. Because we are monitoring what is going on. It has not reached that stage for now. So once we're able to take that on and manage those cases through, we'll now look at the graph again for a certain number of reasonable time. The medical experts will determine that. Then based on that, we we'll now should be able to categorically say that we are safe to open those schools or not. I know a whole lot of um, school of thoughts have come up that the age grade of those who are in school are the less susceptible to this uh, 
virus attack. Uh, but as I said, I don't want to play God here. I'm not a medical expert. Let me just follow the simple principle of management that I know, how to manage situations like this. And once the graph is at a fast declining stage, then we'll fix a date to reopen school. However, I want people to avail themselves of the school on radio. Out of popular demand, we're doing for JSS and SSS. Out of popular demand, we're going to add the primary schools because right now, people are paying, calling on us to add primary schools, the basic education at that very primary level. So we are working on that. I'm sure the Commissioner for Education should come up as soon as possible so that we can start that next week, the primary school level, and then we'll let them know the timetable and what and what we'll take on. Let them avail themselves of that. I know it's not the best, but that's the best we can afford out of this crisis situation. We could have loved to do on TV so that we could take something like physics, chemistry, biology, and maths. But you know those ones will need a whole lot. So we can't afford that now because if we do that, we'll be highly discriminatory. Those in the rural areas do not have access to TV. They might not be able to do that. Then somebody says, how can we get people to wear face masks? Please, I keep reemphasizing something. Protect yourself. You must protect yourself. There's a limit to which government can do for you. Everybody should learn to protect himself or herself. Find out. A lot of people were saying, oh, coronavirus is not real. To those who have experience it, they are coming out to tell you, look, coronavirus is real. Don't wait to go through it because you can never tell your health condition 100%. So why not just abstain from it? And it's a very simple thing. Wear facial masks to protect yourself. Protect the next partner. And I've also heard that people try to share masks. Please don't do that. It's a very risky situation. Also, if you enter KK, what we call KK, I try to use that name, a minibus. And the driver tries to pass any face mask to you in order to avoid him being arrested. Please don't wear it. Tell him you are not allowed to do that because you don't know who wore that last. It is the easiest means to transmit the virus from one person to another. Another thing we observe is when you wear the mask, but when you want to talk to people, you now remove the mask. The essence is you can wear it so that the droppings will not pose a kind of risk on the next person to you, except you're sitting on your own the way I'm sitting. Nobody is near you, then you're allowed to do this. And also, if you're addressing close to 7 million people, you need to speak so that they can hear you clearly. You don't get misquoted. That's the only instance that is allowed for you to do what I'm doing. Outside that, please protect yourself. I can only preach that over and over again. Another question that people ask in terms of, to, as a, to join what you're saying, that if we can allow, a, an, uh, if we can unlock the domestic economy the way we've done the past one week. Why can't we allow churches, social gatherings, uh, burials, weddings to hold? You see, the problem is not the church. The problem is after the church, what happens? We are all Christians in this state, we know. People coming to the church, they come individually. So that's not a problem. You use sanitizer, wear face masks. But once they share the grace out of that church, oh my God, somebody you've not seen in one week, that's when people begin to hug. That's when people begin to share fellowship, brotherhood, sisterhood, and so on. That is where we are scared of. Not that we couldn't allow the church to hold. At that point, the pastor wouldn't be able to control the crowd. He wouldn't be able to control how those people interact after service. That's why we still try to hold on a little for all social gatherings and then churches. Then if we, if we ever get anybody who tries to do either wedding within this period, or trying to do burial when government has not approved for you to do that, certainly we'll get those people arrested. So please, don't just push us to that point. Obey simple instructions. Hold on to this. Let's try and drive the cough downwards. And then we'll open up everywhere. I think I've answered all the questions. Yes, you have. Actually. It's, um, most of what you've said is actually the concerns of the people on Facebook. But one thing stands out. What do we do about the mortuaries? considering that uh, the are going to stay Yeah, I've just read out the statistics of death for you. When it gets to that point, we'll now take decision. You see, you can't take a preemptive decision now so that you don't try to solve one problem and create more. As of today, I mean, you've seen the number of deaths in the first four months, and we're monitoring it. If it gives us that cause for concern. Mind you, there are a lot of mortuaries that uh, we don't even know. We don't even have control as government. 
So some people will go inside a bush and set up a kind of mortuary, which you might not, no signpost, nothing. It's only people within that community that they know. So uh, there are all kinds of mortuaries that uh, come up these days, and um, we cannot even take account of all. But trust me, we are trying to review these cases. There's no single evening I don't meet with the COVID-19 team. We meet every evening from 9 p.m. at times till 1 a.m. to review cases on daily basis. So if we meet on daily basis, make sure that we are reviewing cases on daily basis. And that doesn't even end. If I have to meet at daytime, I also meet. So we are reviewing these cases. Once it gets to a certain point that we need to uh, open up for burials, we'll do that. But for now, uh, we've not reached that point yet. We'll manage it up to this point. Let us not lose the gains of the past five weeks overnight, please. I need to appeal to our citizens. If we don't manage these next two weeks so well, we may lose all the gains of the past six weeks. Uh, I know it's inconveniencing. Nobody prayed for this. But let's check. Either that social engagement or your life. Which one is more important to me as a governor? It's your life, not the social engagement. The person that has died and is in the mortuary is already in heaven. So let's allow you that you're still on earth to live a good life so that you can also, the day when your time comes, you can also make heaven conveniently. So my duty is to save lives. So please, let them bear with me for now, bear with the entire machinery of government. We are reviewing the cases. When it gets to the point that we have to allow for funerals and weddings, we'll let people do that. But observe social distancing. So then I went to somewhere inside the town, and I saw a whole lot of people coming out to welcome me. Uh, well, well, I appreciate that welcome, but this is not the time for that kind of people coming together. I had to use the law enforcement agency to make sure they observe social distancing. Some of them must go back at home. If you don't have any business outside, please stay at home. You owe your children a duty to be alive for them, please. You owe your children that duty. Don't, out of carelessness, go and expose your life, expose the life of your entire family. We've read everywhere, we are hearing everywhere where one person had been careless in a whole family and the entire family tested positive. So don't expose your entire family to danger. Please, within a short period, we'll be out of this. As we are managing the cases uh, physically, medically, we're also managing it also spiritually. Because when things defy man's logic, it means it's only God that has a solution. So we are managing it all around, and that's why I'm here. More questions? Uh, callers. callers can okay. Let them reach me. Hello. Hello. Could you speak up a little bit? Hello. Please mention your name and then where you're calling from. Your name and where you're calling from. Instruction of the Excellency. Mention your name and where you are calling from. Hello. Sorry, can you hear you? You are not audible. Hello. We've lost that caller. We've lost connection to that caller. Uh, Perhaps we should be next week. Okay. Um, John Mary Okun has a question. What is the government? Um, I wanted to take that as my closing remark, but since it has come as a question, let me answer that clear. People have different styles. Uh, we may not run that style of government of uh, where you see us every minute making noise. But I want to reassure you, we have our people protected. Uh, uh, people send me texts about all kinds of people coming to the state. Please be rest assured, interstate passenger travel is not allowed. Even when you see on TV, oh, they say so so number of people came from Akwaibom. You can see that those people are not Akwaibom indigents. It means that we return them at our border. So those other people just got to realize that we've already returned them from our border. So uh, please be rest assured that we are doing everything possible. Let me also uh, surprise all of you. You may not know this. If you go to those our borders, you can check this out now. Take, for example, go to our border towards the two bridge. You will see a 3G camera mounted there. And that 3G camera, we have it reflected on our iPads, on our phones. 
monitoring every single vehicle coming towards that border, how they are being treated. So if there's any exception, uh, we'll pick it up. If you go to our situation room now, you see all those cameras in Ikorabasi, in Itu, everywhere. In majority, in the busy borders, it's not all, because we have so many routes because of the shoreline. But in the borders that are quite busy, if you go, you see all those cameras that we're trying to pick. So whoever comes in, let me give you an example, like early hours of this morning, uh, they tried to stop a truck, and the truck wanted to jump the, within a short period, it was blocked. And we return the entire passengers. We don't intend to do those through camera, uh, because at the same time, uh, people have different styles. We believe what is effective for us is what we are doing right now. So if we can go up to the point of mounting cameras in those borders, it shows to you. Uh, somebody uh, sent me a text message oh, about a certain number of uh, illegal people that cross the border into Eket. That is not correct. The truck that brought goods and cows to Eket, we checked up to the bed of the, of the trailer. There were only 13 occupants. So as soon as they offloaded the goods and the cows, the whole 13 were back in the trailer and they were escorted out of Akwaibu. They were escorted physically by security agents out of Akwaibu. People must obey. There is no interstate passenger movement across the country. So people must obey that. So uh, we don't take pleasure in noise making. The pleasure is for us to make sure we execute what we believe is good. So, for the fact that you've not seen me jump up a trailer on you know, TV and so on, does not mean we don't have a latest way of money monitoring it. I just gave you an example. Go to our situation room, drive down now to the bridge. You see a 3G camera mounted there. In fact, we're aiming at 4G, but it's only we couldn't get 4G camera because of the lockdown. It's as crystal clear as anything. I watch it in my bedroom, I watch it in my office, so I monitor what is going on everywhere. Same thing with the CP. The CP is monitoring it. You go to the situation room that we have. They are monitoring what is going on. So don't rely on stories people tell you. Let us tell you what we have on ground. And you also have every liberty to walk into a situation room and see these things for yourself once in a while. I think that will also convince you and will make you more relaxed. I keep telling people, at this time, fear should give way for faith. Please maintain your faith. No fear. No fear. I keep saying so. So that we can see through this process together. I think there are more questions from your Facebook. Yeah. Okay, a caller is coming in on the telephone. Hello. I Traditional medicine and traditional cure. Uh, well, Ubon from Calabar, you are concerned about traditional medicine and traditional cure. I'm not either of the two. So I lack 
um, let me say the expertise to tell you what traditional medicine can do in this case. What I know is what the medical experts are doing. I said so, that recovery today from our case management file is 100%. It means that these people are putting certain things right. When I was giving an update last week, I talked about some, uh, even today, there's a, med a medication they've discovered in the US. I may not pronounce it well, but it's called, is it Remdesivir or whatsoever? Remdesivir. Uh, it's in the US. Uh, they, you, can't, you can't even do, in fact, even the states can't even lay hands on it. It's only managed by the federal uh, government of the United States of America because they have only 200,000 doses. So you can't go out at all. But what we have here, and within the week I talk about, um, I talk about, uh, is it anticoagulant? I talked about um, aspirin. I talk about uh, hydrochloroquine. I talk about azithromycin. Uh, some of these things uh, had been there before now. And um, knowing our own style, because you know we don't run a typical capitalist system. These are medications that a whole lot of Nigerians still buy across the counter in the pharmacy shop. And um, I may not be that medical expert, but I know our case management people know what to do. They know what to combine. They know how to manage these things through. And um, I will leave that for them. But in terms of traditional medicine, I would advise, please, please, don't go on traditional uh, medication because of the dosage. That's always the problem. I can give you a clear case as a governor. I've had a case sometime last year where a man went on self-medication and put uh, some medication in an illicit gene, what we call Kai Kai, and took it. And by the following morning, the man was in the mortuary because only God knows what he put in that Kai Kai. The thing got, I mean, completely damaged the organs in the system. And by the following morning, the man was as weak as anything. Before 8 a.m. in the morning, the man was dead. And this was something he mixed in Kai Kai around 4, 5 p.m the previous day. Please, please, and please, don't go on self-medication. If you have issue, call our uh, situation room, and our case management people will counsel you. If we need to bring you to isolation center, we'll send vehicles or ambulances to bring you immediately. Don't go on self-medication. That's my advice. We have enough facilities to manage these cases for now. And God will help us not to allow the case to be out of hand. As I said, we're already experiencing a cough declining. So please don't go on that. I want to advise against it. Don't buy any medicine. You know there are some medicines they sell where they use a horn speaker. One medication will cure every disease. Everything they will be cured by just one medication. Uh, in the state, we have a task force against those people. Don't buy anything from those people, please. If you have any situation now, call us or seek uh, help from any medical expert. Thank you. The one says, are you sure you are out of the woods yet? People are dying and others are still testing positive. Another one has mentioned that uh, what's happening about the test center being established in Akwaibu. Okay, so let me take the two questions together. I've never mentioned here that we're out of the woods. So please, if you're quoting me, quote me correctly. I've never said so. I said that this thing is like a graph being plotted. And everything in life follows a normal curve. That once we see a declining curve, we now know decisions to take. Let me say here, I might not be a medical expert. There is no virus of this nature that you expect will go out within a month, two or three. It is not practical as man, but not as God. It's only God that can take away this virus within one second. But as far as man's knowledge is concerned, a virus like this can never go off in, in, a, in a month or two or three. So what we'll do is to find a way to manage the situation because at the same time, we cannot lock up the entire economy forever. I said this when this uh, thing started newly, that what will pose a bigger threat to Africa is the economic impact of coronavirus, not the virus itself. So the economic impact of this virus is a major challenge to Africa, not even the virus itself. So have it at the back of your mind that we must devise a means to manage things through. So nobody had ever said that anybody anywhere in the world is out of the woods. No, not at all. 
Nobody can say so, nobody can claim that. We are not out of the woods. But once we can find a way to manage the situation, to also allow us to have life and livelihood, that's what we're after. We cannot, we cannot cease to live at all. I mean, that, that is totally out of it all. So life and livelihood must be managed alongside COVID-19 so that um, we get things done and we get things through. The, the second question in that case was, um, the testing center, as you all know, uh, there's a little or not much a state government can do. Because those centers, every single uh, place across the globe are scrambling for the same set of machine. Nobody knew this was going to happen. It's taking the whole world on a ways. So the demand for those machines are very high. I said so three, four weeks ago that we booked for our own PCR machine since March. Up to now, they've not delivered. And the federal government is supposed to actually help us with the help they are getting from uh, United Nations, from European Union. They're supposed to help the states to set up at least one uh, testing center. You can see in the whole of this region, Cross River, Aqua Ibom, Rivers, Bayelsa, Delta, they've not set up even one center. The one we used to have in Portacot had been down. They promised us since last week that they were going to bring it up so that we can be going there. As I'm talking to you right now, we drive seven and a half hours, 15 hours to and fro, Irwa, to go and do a test. I believe for you to have a certified testing center must be certified by WHO and also NCDC. As of today, the other test centers you're hearing everywhere is not done by state government. It's done by the federal government. So you can also scream at the federal government that we in this region, we also deserve for them to set up a testing center for us. Because all those states I'm mentioning, Bayelsa, Rivers, Aqua Ibom, Cross River, Delta, they've not set up a single one. We have uh, some expert machines, gen expert, that we could have converted. But you know, the accessories, we also still must import those accessories. We've also imported some accessories for that conversion. It has not yet arrived. Even the PCR machine, even if it arrives today, the accessories must still also come differently. The demand is very high across the globe. Every single country of the world is also looking up to the same manufacturers for this equipment. So please, for now, all these centers you're hearing is not done by state government. And um, we are trying our own to, to make sure we set up our PCR machine as soon as they come in. But I'm sure uh, it will come in very, very soon. We've tried to see how we can fast track it, but we must join the queue. Because this thing is as you pay for it, they start manufacturing for you. Because they didn't manufacture this quantity and keep to take care of the whole world. So we paid for it since March, and we're joining the queue. And once they deliver our own, of course, we won't keep quiet over it. We'll also let you know. And we'll get WHO and NCDC to certify so that we can start our own testing. It's not only even for only coronavirus, but for all other uh, tests that can be done in terms of lab grade three. How come you
responsibility in answering some of the questions that I put to you. What about anything from the data? Yeah, um, I'm getting there. Okay, let's see if we can take this forward. Hello? 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 Good evening. What's your name? What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Okay, go ahead. Is that all your questions? Is that all you have to ask just about church services? Okay, I, but if, uh, it could be you didn't uh, join us on time. I've answered that question before, but let me answer it again. For now, no church services. I repeat, no church services. Let your church uh, reach out to your people online. Please reach out to your people online. There's enough adequate technology these days to preach to, in fact, the entire world this time around. Uh, not even only your members. It's even better. You can be rich uh, across the globe. So please, let's use that for now. We'll come back to you to let you know whether we'll relax on church services or not. But I took time to explain this earlier, that the reason we don't allow church is not just because of the number, but because of the level of interaction after the services. And uh, you can't take that away from our people. You know we're Africans. We love ourselves. We like to interact. We like that communal life. So... Uh, we need to also set certain things to put us to check. So for now, please bear with me. You know, somebody like me, I love services. But at critical situation like this, there's nothing we can do. Join your service online. Still give the offering online too. If you collect the offering in your home, pass it on to your pastor. Uh, listen to the messages, pray very well from your home. I think the same God that is in the church will also bless your home. Uh, just gather your family tomorrow and join the services uh, online. Hello. Hello. Pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Has it finished? Yes. Hello. Good evening. Please, your name and where you are calling from and your question to His Excellency. And can you speak up a little so that I can hear you well? I can hear you. Go ahead. I can. Am I correct? Correct. Is that, is that all you have to do? Yes, we've heard your name. Is that all you have? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. From the Twitter? Twitter, I don't know what the problem is with Twitter, but from Facebook. Um, Your Excellency, you are doing well. Google Wilson. Please, I believe there should be some drastic actions and punishments for those circulating fake news on COVID-19 in the States. Some people rely on this, info this information and get enmeshed in fear. Uh, well, Uba Wintima, thank you for your comment. You know, I'm a very uh, good evangelist of rule of law. So I think the law enforcement uh, agencies know what to do when there's an infraction. Uh, I'll leave them to do their own work. But if you remember, I started by quoting Luke chapter 6, uh, I think verse 26 where I said that, woe to the man that I expect everybody to speak well of him. So don't ever expect that everybody, that's why the Bible will tell you that some eyes have eyes, some have eyes, but they cannot see. 
some have ears, but they cannot hear. So those people have been there even before me and you were born. So they will continue to be there. So don't be bothered about that. Just look up to what you can do, how you can contribute your own quota to make a quiet state a better place. We are doing everything humanly possible. I want to believe whatsoever we are putting in place, once we are done and we commission all of them, Aquibum will be a better place. Already is a toast of so many countries of the world. And for some of you who actually congratulated me, let me also take this before my time is up. All of you who send congratulatory messages uh, on the arrival of new aircraft on Ibom Air, we took time to let you know even the kind of air flow circulation in the new airplane. Uh, I think it might interest you to know that your state stands for quality and anything good and whatsoever is of excellence. I mean, we are, we are in there. You can imagine a state government under this trying moment coming out with a plane that came out of the factory in May 2014. That kind of aircraft is brand new. Year of warranty of any aircraft is five years. So an aircraft that is one year post warranty, its mint is fresh. Its mint is fresh. And two are coming. I mean, the second one should be coming later on. What you're seeing there is nothing, but that's why you could see a whole lot of people, bad people trying to fight your governor. Because your governor has a name out there in the international market. Your governor has integrity in the international market. Your governor's name can attract airplanes, even without the state government dropping one naira. It goes to show the level of trust, the level of the kind of person, the kind of respect people outside have for your state as a Kwaibom state. So, and that's why you see, anywhere you see something good, Satan will always be there to perform his own ministry. And you know Satan's ministry is to destroy, to kill, and to steal. So your prayer should be for the state that let Satan not come to destroy what God is putting in place for this state. It is not easy. It is not easy. If it's that easy, almost every state would have done it. Almost everywhere would have done it. This is not easy. So let's, uh, let's, let's just leave it at that, and let's believe God that with your support and with everything we'll reach there. So I really want to appreciate all those who send me congratulatory messages, thanking God for what has been done so far, and I really want to believe that God has answered your prayers and God has answered your blessing upon the government, upon people of Aquaibo. I still stand to pray for the state, that God will bless the state, will open more doors to us as a people, so that we can get help from people. God will not come down himself to help us. God will always help us through other people and through other nations. And our prayer is, may this door continue to be open not only to government, but to every Aquaibo might, wherever they can find themselves, in every trade that they are doing, let God help our people to succeed. That's always my prayer. So thank you for all the messages you send congratulating the state on the delivery of new set of aircrafts. And that's in line with our, with our business plan. We said so, that in 2020, we'll bring in two more aircraft. 2021, we'll bring in two. 2022, by 2022, then we will set up and then that's when we will now commence probably our international flight. So these are all in line with our business case. So we are working in line with that and I'm sure God will help us. So let me thank even the Minister of Aviation for his support. NCA, NAMA, every single agency that has supported us. Let me thank also all my colleagues, other state governors who have also congratulated us, who have supported us no state can do this alone. You need the support of everybody. So I use this platform to thank all the, 30, all the other 35 state governors for all their support. Thank all the ministers, all the federal government agencies that have helped us in the case of Ibom A. We still call on their own support. A job well done means more job to be done. We we'll continue to need more support. Please support us as much as we can. We are not for ourselves alone. We are for Nigeria, we are for Africa. So please be rest assured, we are carrying the flag, Nigerian flag. And we are, once we fly a Nigerian flag, we're also flying uh, that flag also for Africa. It's not just about our quiver, it's about our nation, it's about our continent. Thank you and God bless you. Another question? From Twitter, um, JJ is uh, asking 
what Apoi Mose government is doing regarding hazard allowances and life insurances for health workers in the state. Mufano Bong says, away from COVID-19, there's this story about unpaid salaries of ATSU staff. Wants to know what the true situation is. And then Peace Basi is asking His Excellency to please forgive Kufrekata. Please let him be free. <laughs> well, uh, unpaid salaries at AXU, I'm not aware of that. And that's the truth. You know, we don't micromanage these tertiary institutions. We leave it for those to manage it. My duty is to give them the normal monthly grant that I give them. And uh, we don't miss that at all. As we pay salaries to civil servants, we pass on the grants to all the institutions that we pass on those grants to. But if that is true, I'm going to check with the VC once I leave here. But I'm not aware that Axel had not been paid. Then in terms of hazard allowances, I don't know whether I'm allowed to sit down here to start reeling out what we are doing for medical workers. But find out any doctor who is working with the state, with the state government. And also find out from his counterpart who is working from, uh, for any other government. Let me not mention whether it's federal or this. Let two of them sit and compare notes and discuss with you. You now know who is being treated uh, fairer and better. I don't have to say this, but I know NMA had in various occasions uh, appreciated what we've done for health workers in the state. I think as of today, I don't think we are doing badly at all. So don't expect me to start reeling out the figures. Uh, I think people just want to create some envy and jealousy somewhere. I don't want to give room for that. But trust me, we are treating our health workers very well. We can always do better. Once the economy improves, we'll do better because I want all of them to be happy and excited working for the state government. <laughs> One more. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Your name and where you calling from? A question for the governor. Okay, Mo, go ahead. I can hear you. So you go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. so much. Uh, if you ask me, my first answer would have been yes. It's going to be very regular. But whether it will be very, every Saturday, I don't know. You know, to put this on A, live, I need so many other MDAs to work with me. AKBC must play a major role. And I want to run AKBC as a pure business concern. If the money I'm paying them cannot overshadow what they are getting from corporate Wall. I will allow them to run their programs so that they can earn revenue. But if what I'm paying them can allow them to give me the time that others have paid for, then I can, I can allow them to take a specific time. But allow them to run a normal, professional, limited liability outfit. But I can assure you, I'll find time to interact with you as often as possible throughout this period. I will not allow two weeks to lapse. Uh, don't call me on every week. It might not be necessary for me to speak to you every week so that you don't get too tired of hearing from me. But trust me, at least once every two weeks, you will hear from me. Uh, as time goes on, we'll move a little from COVID-19 because I keep saying so the major challenge is not on COVID-19, but it's on the economy. What happens after COVID-19? So I'd like you to also get yourself prepared. We'll get into that. What happens after COVID-19? Where do we go from here? 
I want to run a state that we are devoid of self-pity. Uh, a lot of people are calling, trying to express concerns. We've not sold crude oil. We've not done this. The question is, if we work on one money and there's no crude oil, we will not carry our hands on our head and start screaming and, uh, you know, nobody will pity you. Have that at the back of your mind. If you think others are pitying you, that the crude oil price that crashed like this in the international market, you're wasting your time. Nobody is pitying you. There are some people who are happy that your crude oil price has crashed. So what you need to do now is to put on your thinking cap. We all have to be a little bit more creative. Our youths need to come up very strong to support the domestic economy. We need to stimulate the economy. I still am one of those that believe. If you remember one of my pillars of Dakada philosophy, is that whatsoever we have is all that we need to get to where we have to get to. So what we have is all that we need. If you think we don't have anything, God forbid, we have a whole lot. So whatsoever we have today is all that we need to get to where others get to. Nobody has the monopoly of God. So how others did it with nothing? If you go to so many places, uh, take a place like New Zealand. What do they have in New Zealand? But it's one of the most developed nations of the world, just out of tourism. So I believe there is a whole lot God has given to us. If desert today can be exporting food, how much more we in Aquaibo? All it takes is that determination and that commitment from every single Aquaibo might that we can launch ourselves out the way we are and launch ourselves aggressively and be a force to be reckoned with on planet Earth that this is the lesson of COVID-19. And I'm sure with that, we'll get, we'll get out of it. And that's why I'm also trying to reinforce what I said earlier, that this will teach us a whole lot. It will let us know that there could be a situation in this country where no matter how rich you are, 15 minutes will be too much for you to survive. Even when you have the money, nobody will let you enter his own country. So what we do should be able to keep us afloat as a people with the best we can achieve. So I call on all our might, please let's go back to our Dakada philosophy. For us to be able to win this battle, we need to be on a united front. Our togetherness, our being devoid of all biases, is here is essential. Seeing ourselves from the positive, you know, there are two angles to any human existence and human reasoning. If you have, have a glass of water, the negative-minded person will tell you it's half empty. The positive-minded person will tell you it's half full. Let's take each person that we have what God has given us that can make us to be number one in Africa. And I'm sure with what God has blessed us with, we can be there. I'm sure we'll do a lot more than where we find ourselves today with COVID-19. And with the quality of youth that we have, energetic, good workforce, that we can put our heads together, we can stimulate this domestic economy to a level that we can be self-sufficient. I believe in that for sure. And I want to thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think I've always been doing that all the time. My prayer still goes for every single five of mine that nobody has the monopoly of God. God will be with us all. The greatest prayer anybody can pray for you is that God should be with you. So my prayer is God be with every five of mine. God be with the five of my estate. Once God is with you, I forget it. You've gotten it all. I think that's all that we need. God be with us all. That's my prayer. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. I have been so kind for your time and for the rich perspective you've shared with us. Thank you very much. Uh, in the next two weeks, that's the one we call back. It will be less. <laughs> but it will be less. If people want me to come up, you know, A lot of people still don't understand our vision on some areas that we are doing in aviation, in infrastructure, in uh, domestic economy. We'll try to dissect this so that people will understand. And also let people understand that we are moving to that era. If you check the price of crude oil, absolutely we're not expecting anything much. 
But we must be able to stand as a people to weather the storm and let people have faith that we can march on, no matter the adversity. Once again, I thank all our Bible people. God bless you all. Have opportunity to talk about all that. Uh, no problem. I'm here. Thank I'm here. Thank you. you. Thank 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 you.